So as journalism changes, the mediums for writing or for reporting have also changed. Um, one that uh, is really has been really interesting for me has been sort of the platform as the outlet, right? So places like Bandcamp, places like Genius, there are a whole bunch of out there, but I just sort of reference these two in particular. These are you know platforms for um, acquiring music or learning more about music, but they have also sort of like built these editorial um, bodies that. Uh, are also sort of allowing for kind of more traditional forms of journalism and writing to come through. For example, at Bandcamp, one of my really good friends, Jess Skolnick, um, is a senior editor there. And Jess had spent years doing reporting for The Reader, for Pitchfork, for all these other sorts of places, right? Genius, um, some of the people I know who kind of helped sort of create genius as it was from more than just like the lyrics part of it or whatever, they came from, you know, they had been um, writers and editors at like Complex, at The Fader, so and so. And so um, a lot of these places, like I said, are sort of um, uh, creating these, these, these ways to talk about music beyond just like, oh, I'm going to Bandcamp, I'm going to buy this album and then download it and not think anything more about it because they kind of realize that, um, you know, there is value in the journalism and the criticism and the, you know, everything else as it relates to um, the music, right? Like they kind of work together in some ways. Um, uh, podcasts are really great, and um, it's actually kind of surprising to me. There aren't as many um, music podcasts as I think there should be. Um, I put up uh, Mogul, which is one of my favorite ones. I don't know if you all have like listened to it. Um, it uh, was from Gimlet. Um, they just came out, or they're still coming out rather, with um, their second season. It is about basically it's about like the um, creation of hip hop. It's really great. Um, uh, just. You know, and this is a way to, in my mind, it's kind of like doing the longest form <laughs> of long form writing, um, you know, and you like it, it takes a while to kind of like understand how to do sort of like podcast or like radio writing, right? Um, but once you do, I think that there's a lot of similarities to maybe more traditional sort of outlets of journalism. Um, I started getting into like radio and podcasting when I was working for WBEZ, right? I was just supposed to be like a blogger, but then they were like, oh, we want you to like come on and like do segments. And I was like, like, you can do that, right? And I was like, yeah, like I, you know, I'm not going to say no, right? I'm just going <laughs> to figure it out along the way because that's how I've always done it my entire life. Um, and now they are so important and, and so key to how we sort of consume media. Also, people like them because there's a lot of money in podcasting as well. So, <laughs> um, Do you have any other podcasts you would recommend? Music podcasts? Um, ooh, let me think. Um, uh, well, I love, it's not really a podcast, it's more of a radio show, but you can listen to it in podcast format, is like Sound Opinions. Um, uh, I, I'm trying to think of others that are really great. Um, Resident Advisor used to do like a really great podcast. Um, they not only do sort of like, like actual, just like sort of DJs doing mixes, but they would do sort of like interviews and things like that. Resident Advisor does like electronic music in particular. Um, but yeah, I, the fact that I can't think of more off the top of my head shows that there's like a, a, an opening for it. And, um, there are tons of people in at Gimlet, but at other places as well that are like looking for new podcasts. I know this all the time because they email me and they're like, "Do you have any ideas?" And I'm like, "No, but I'll think of some, you know, whatever." So if you if any of you want that information of who to contact at Gimlet, I can give that to you because they are just looking for more and more and more. And um, you know, so much of journalism is run off of like ads. So, so many of these companies are looking to put their ads on podcasts. That's why they want more podcasts. Um, yeah. Videos, which we kind of talked about a little bit. Um, I put this like uh, clip here. This is from, um, I really love uh, what Resident Advisor does again. Um, and they had this series called Real Scenes. They went to a bunch of different cities across the globe, like LA, New York, Tokyo, Amsterdam, a um, couple other places, and would talk about like what their like uh, electronic music scenes were like. And they would make these like 
you know, 20, 30 minute long films, essentially. And they were extremely popular. Um, and they would spend, you know, again, longer than, you know, uh, they would spend like a couple weeks to like a couple months in a place, really kind of just doing that, that real on the ground reporting, doing interviews with people, um, doing scene reporting, just, you know, so it, it was kind of like, you know, uh, videos are, are so, um, continue to be really important. They're not the most important, which a lot of like, outlets will like tell you like we're pivoting the video like people still like to read things because it's much quicker um but if you're doing like really beautiful kind of like long form pieces like this this could be like another outlet for for you if you're looking to expand the writing that you're doing or the creation that you're doing to a different outlet and places are always looking for more people who are able to do these kind of projects for them um I've done a couple of video projects in the past. I did a piece on um, like the history of Chicago house music for like a British publication, Enemy, um, and I had written for them in the past. Like I did a a piece on um, on uh, Run the Jewels. I like, flew down to Atlanta and had a whole bunch of fun with them. Um, and then they're like, hey, you're also in Chicago. Do you want to like work on this with us? And so that was, for me, was like doing a lot of research. It was, you know, making connections with certain people I knew that were part of the, the scene, um, you know, conducting interviews with them, transcribing those interviews, and then, you know, bringing that to the video producers who would then kind of like look through what I had like gathered and were like, okay, maybe these are the people we want to talk to to tell the story that we want to tell. So it's not as like maybe as glamorous as like getting like a cover story on like a magazine, but it is a way to sort of like utilize those skills that you've already developed as a writer and as a journalist um, and apply it to a different platform. Um, I know people don't like this, but every freelance writer you know is doing this. They just won't admit it. Um, copywriting, brand journalism, and playlists. So starting with copywriting, so if you're like on like Apple Music and you see like there's like a kind of like paragraph long like explanation of like this album, but it's like written in a way that's like better than average or what a computer would come up with, that's because it's being written by Pitchfork reviewers, right? It's being written by Fader Review. Like I, no joke, I know it because I've done it, right? It's those are the people who are doing it because, you know, writing, doing a review for Pitchfork is going to net you $85, unless it's like a best new music or like the you know top review of the day, which will get you like $150, which is like fine, but it's not gonna like pay your bills. But like doing something like this for like Apple Music would maybe get you like $200, which is why a lot of people are like doing it, right? And you're just writing a paragraph about like the new Solange album. Sure, why not, perfect. So um, there's a lot of that kind of like work out there. And again, that kind of work is happening or you can, can be found a lot of times through those connections you make with other people. Because these brands, whether it's Apple, whether it's Spotify, whether it's you know whomever, they want to know that the people who are doing this are not just like some random like Joe Schmo that's like out there. There are also a lot of like um, uh, kind of like, I guess they would, they're technically, I guess, like marketing agencies or like marketing groups, but um, they're the ones who are kind of like in charge of um, of these uh, sort of doing a lot of this like, kind of like copywriting and stuff like that. Um, if any, if anyone's interested in getting information about some of those, including like the top one, I can give that information to you as well because they're also always looking for writers um, and always looking for like content and things like that. For example, I did a, I did a. a for like Spotify for musicians. So like, you know, you can create your own profile and all this stuff and track like how many, who's listening to your music and where they're listening to it or whatever. Like I uh, created a guide for like, you know, um, what was it? The, like it was like a, how to understand your analytics for um, making like touring choices. I don't know, but it, you know, helped me pay rent that month. So, um, you know, they have, there's weird like opportunities like that, like that that are out there and they want people who again, have that kind of experience and understand the music to do it. Um, there's brand journalism. So, um, and brand journalism would be something, you know, it could be anything from doing advertorials um, to uh, doing, you know, um, kind of like real reporting, but it's for a brand. Um, uh, an outlet that was well known really for doing this was like Red Bull, for example. 
excuse me, they had their Red Bull Music Academy um, website where they had everything from like videos to um, playlists to, you know, original feature reporting and X, you know, and things like that that were out there. Um, there's a lot of different companies that are like doing things like that. Um, they tend to pay very well. Um, they are uh, pretty well respected within the industry because a lot of people who were working for them as like an editor or managerial positions came from those outlets before. Um, so like, for example, like everyone who's in uh, the, the main person who's in charge of the editorial wing of Apple Music, um, Scott Plagenhof, he was one of the top editors at uh, Pitchfork. And that was back when like Pitchfork was like in Chicago. So, um, you know, people who are working for Red Bull Music Academy that I know, um, you know, they were, um, they had worked at like the Fader, they had worked at Complex, they had worked at um, Vibe before. So um, again, you know, it's not like some marketing bro coming in and being like, oh, let's like, do this thing, it's more like people who actually have that background in journalism who are kind of just trying to find a way to bring journalism into their corporate job, um, to be honest.